My name is Nathan. Uh, I'm the lead instructor of Tattooing 101. Hey, what's up? I'm Brandon. Yeah, this is our first podcast and basically, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And we're basically just going to talk about uh, the 10 things that we kind of wish that we knew before we started tattooing. Um, so if you're at the beginning of your journey, uh, learning how to tattoo, that's definitely worth a watch. I was going to do five each and then, uh, yeah, kind of see where it goes. So first one I got is the process of uh, doing taxes, uh, depending on where you are, United States of America, you know, other places, they're all different um, tax laws and what you pay in every year. So it is very important to, you know, get very, um, get some knowledge on, learning how to pay your taxes or paying someone to do so because the repercussions for doing them wrong are very terrible and you do not want you know the people to come after the money to get a hold of you so you need to make sure you're doing it right has that happened to you, Did you no taxes up in the Dude, that's one thing that scares me to death so i will not let that happen because oh. they will take everything you love yeah man the, the uh the ATO is kind of like the IRS in America. They're, they're yeah. like ruthless, man. But yeah. um, there's so many turtles out there that don't even pay taxes. Like, because it's, it's like a cash kind yeah. of business. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of it's kind of moving away from that now. But yeah, I it's feel like that's a lot of incriminating stuff. There, stuff. But, sorry? I said this is talking about incriminating stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, this, I, think, I feel like it definitely goes on. But uh, yeah, 100%, you should always... Uh, Pay your taxes. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Um, yeah, one thing that I wish I knew was um, you're kind of a one-man band uh, when, you, when you go into tattooing. You have to realize that, you know, you, there's, there's very kind of few shops out there that, you know, kind of handle the admin stuff for you and the marketing for you. For the most of the part, especially when you're starting out, you're drawing your own designs you know, you're doing your own marketing, you're posting on Instagram, you're trying to get your own clientele, um, you're doing your own taxes, you're doing your own, you know, uh, financial stuff. And, um, you know, after hours, you know, people are constantly hitting you up with inquiries. They're like, hey, you know, how much to get this done? Um, and it can get super stressful and you can get kind of super burnout. So what I'd recommend is that, you know, you, you've got to be kind of really efficient uh, when when you're when you're a tattooer, just to kind of get everything done and you know ensure that your drawings are kind of done and everything's kind of sorted. But um, as soon as you can in tattooing, like once you start to see a bit of success, you want to get some leverage. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're doing everything yourself, uh, your your productivity is going to be limited. You know, you're not going to be able to draw um, as much if you're doing all your own you know, customer support. So what I'd recommend is like once, you know, you start making a bit of money, um, hiring a VA, like a virtual assistant from, you know, somewhere like the, the Philippines or somewhere like that, they work for like four bucks an hour and you can get them to handle, you know, like all of your, your, your emails, your messages and, um, you know, bookings, things like that. And that can take like a lot of, uh, a lot of work off your plate. Um, you know, also as well, you know, using automation, like things like, you know, using Calendly, um, you can base instead of when you're talking to someone uh, and they, they want to book in or something, instead of kind of going back and forth, trying to figure out a time, you can just send them a link and they can book themselves in your calendar um, and it can, you can get it to take a deposit as well. So then it just kind of saves like a lot of, you know, the going back and forth. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'd say. Get some leverage when you can. Yeah, for sure, man. So number two would probably be, um, so learning an effective way to tattoo isn't always, you know, being able to make a clean tattoo. Healing is a big deal. Um, when I say that, when I first started tattooing, you know, I could make, you know, a nice looking tattoo, but then it would heal terribly. You know, lines would fall out, all that stuff. So, you know, eventually I got to the point to where I would tattoo my friends and be able to see how they would heal every day. And I think that helped me a lot, um, you know, in the long run, because I kind of tweaked a couple of things with how I tattoo, the speed I do, you know, pretty much everything to have them heal appropriately without scabbing. So that's one thing I wish I knew from the very beginning. So I wouldn't be, you know, doing the least amount of trauma to the skin 
while making a clean tattoo is literally the best way to tattoo for sure. So just having that knowledge to start would be way more beneficial for sure. What's your opinion on like, so if you're doing like a color piece, you know, um, if you're using like standard tape, like 12 gauge needles, you can get the mm-hmm. ink in a lot faster. It obviously mm-hmm. causes more trauma to the skin. But yeah. If you're using, you know, bug pins or 10 gauge needles, uh, it causes less trauma to the skin, but you've got to do more passes and more layers to get your colors in. Yeah. Um, what, what, what kind of works for you when it comes to like getting something that sort of heals well? So with me, and this is not something I recommend, you know, I learned from someone that tattooed fast. So that's just kind of what I picked up on um, and kind of ran with that. And I've had to do a lot of changes with that to have them heal up correctly. But for me with color, I use the standard needles. Um, Bug pens work really good for me with like gray wash and stuff. But to get the color in, you know, I like to be one area done and move on to the next one. I don't like to go over stuff because I feel like with me personally, you know, five to six years ago, I had trouble when I went over areas more than once. You know, that's when I got that kind of where it would scab up or kind of muddy up the color. Um, so I just kind of went one way. Now you could split off and go either way and, you know, be able to create really good tattoos to heal up. Well, that's just what works for me for sure. Cool. Sweet. Um, yeah, I'm kind of saying I like to use standards and just kind of, I go like one area to the next. Um, I find as well, like if, if I'm, um, you always want to wipe away from like the color that you've just tattooed to, yeah. you know, tattoo dark to light and yeah. also put vas on the, on the colors that you've yeah. already tattooed just to kind of protect them from yeah. when you wipe. Um, that's something that helps me a lot. But um, my next thing would be, man, in tattooing, you need an edge, right? So many people in tattooing say that, you know, the only way, if you want to be a successful tattooer and you want to, you know, make good money, you have to be the best. Now, the problem with that is, if you're someone that's just starting, there's guys that in your town that have been tattooing for 10 years. So if you, if you want to be better than them, then you have to cram 10 years worth of practice to catch up with them and then continue to uh, put in more practice than them to, over, like, to continue to overtake them. And it's just not realistic. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult game to play. And if, if you want to be the best artist, there's only room for one person with that title. But, you know, what, what so many artists don't realize is that there's other ways, other avenues that you can take to, you know, increase, um, to, to make you a more successful tattooer that, that, are, that are a lot uh, easier than, you know, being sort of the best tattooer. What I'm talking about, first of all, is leverage. If you have a virtual assistant, you know, somewhere else in the world doing all of your, you know, uh, customer inquiries, handling, handling your emails, then you have an extra 10 or 15 hours a week that your competition doesn't have. That's an extra 10 or 15 hours that you can spend drawing, doing your own marketing, uh, things like that. Um, another thing as well is, you know, you, you, can, you can build an email list. You know, if you um, build your own website and then you create a, you know, a free sketchbook or someone's like, hey, here's a hundred of my tattoo designs, um, you know, download it for free, just give me your name and email. And then you build an email list and then whenever you want to fill your books, you know, you can send out an email saying it's like, hey, I've got some designs available. Do you want to book in? Then, you know, then you've got, um, you've got leverage in that way. You know, um, most tattooers rely completely on Instagram. And if their Instagram account gets, you know, taken away from them, they're screwed. They've, if they move to a new city and they don't have an Instagram account, no matter how good they are, they're going to have to start from scratch. But when you have an email list, no one can take it away from you. Um, not Instagram, not Facebook or anything like that. So that's super valuable. Yeah, also as well, focusing on, on marketing is, it's kind of, uh, it, can, it can level the playing field. If you're in a town where everyone's, you know, an amazing artist, most tattooers don't ever pay any attention to marketing whatsoever. But what they don't realize is that if you're an eight out of 10 in tattooing, like say your, your success as a tattooer is dictated by, you know, your stats and there's marketing and there's tattooing. Most tattooers, they, they try and be a 10 out of 10 in tattooing and they completely neglect marketing. So there'll be like an eight out of 10 in tattooing and a one out of 10 in marketing. So you multiply those two together, that's eight out of 10, right? But if you're a five in tattooing and a five in marketing, you're a 25. 
which means you'll beat the guy that's an eight in tattooing, but a, a, a one in marketing. So, you know, being the best tattooer isn't the only way to be successful in tattooing. And it, it's actually, you know, the most difficult kind of swimming upstream kind of way. Not to say that you shouldn't be good, but, um, you know, you, you can get a much higher ROI or a turn on investment for your time Whereas if you kind of get to a level of competence in tattooing and then start to, you know, work on your, your marketing. That was a bit of a long rant. <laughs> it was good, man. I liked it a lot. Okay. Number three, um, this is one that's a game changer for sure is when I first started, I would always have the clients sit down in a chair. Um, you know, the basic way that you see, you know, and TV shows, everything that people getting tattooed, no matter where it is, back, leg, you know, they're in a chair, have their leg up. Um, just knowing that there's different ways to put people to, you know, move them in a way to make the tattoo easier to do. Um, not only do you want the client comfortable, um, you need to be comfortable too. Um, when I'm tattooing, you know, I kind of move around a bit. I'll stand up um, when I have them, you know, laying down in a bed. You know, I kind of move around to get to the angles I need to, to create good, clean lines. Um, and that's something that took a long time for me to kind of get used to. Um, Cause this isn't a desk job, you know, we're not just typing in a computer. Um, you know, we're pretty much moving around a circular area. Most of the bodies, you know, not on a straight area. So you kind of need to get in the correct positions to be able to go around those areas correctly. Um, that's something that definitely helped me out a lot for sure. I think that's a really important point too, because even if you're a really good tattooer, if you, if you, if you, it's kind of awkward and you're in an awkward mm -hmm. position and you're trying to do like a perfect line, you're not going to yeah. hit it. Nope. Um, and especially areas like, you know, the stomach, uh, the lower back, mm -hmm. um, that, that weird bit behind the shoulder near the armpit. Yeah. When, I, when I'm tattooing someone's shoulder, I'll get them to put, say if I'm tattooing their right arm, I'll get them to put their right hand on their left shoulder, grab their elbow and lean over like this. So it's fully stretched out that bit of skin. It just makes it super tight. Yeah. And um, when people, I'm tattooing someone's guts, I'll have them lay flat on the massage table and I'll put a bunch of pillows under their back. So they're almost like their the, the midsection is elevated and then it just stretches the, the stomach skin for me. Um, and yeah, when I'm tattooing someone's ribs, I'll have them lay on their side. They'll have um, their leg pointed at one corner of the massage table, their arm over their head. And then I'll put a bunch of pillows under their other side of the ribs and it will, f it'll flatten out their rib cage and stretch out the skin. Yeah. And it's super uncomfortable for the client, but you'll get a much better tattoo out of it. Yeah, for sure. And like skin's unforgiving, man. If you know, it's like a trampoline. It wants to bounce back in some of those areas for sure. So yeah, that stuff definitely helps. Fucking earth, man. Um, yeah, what next, what next one's it, Fadi? So a lot of people, when they come into tattooing, right, they're, they're kind of super starry-eyed. It's like, oh, man, I'm going to you know, get paid to, to tattoo all this stuff that I draw, and then everyone's going to love you know, me for my art. But the reality is, in the beginning, you're a bit of a prostitute. You know, People are going to come to you saying, I want this exact design tattooed on me and I don't want any of your creative input whatsoever. Just give me this. Mm. Um, and in the beginning, it, it can be quite, it can be a bit soul crushing in the beginning. Um, constantly having to, you know, do infinity symbols, butterflies, scripts. And some people, some people will just like, hey, I want you to copy this design exactly. Mm. Uh, and a lot of artists won't do it. Some artists will. Um, but yeah, you, you, you have to kind of realize, I guess, when you, when you get into tattooing, especially in the beginning, before you've built up a brand, um, you're drawing for other people, not for you. Uh, and you've got to make the client happy. And it's not about what you want. It's about what the client wants. And that's why it's so important, I think, to you know, constantly be drawing and producing art, because that's what's going to attract the clients that you want to work on. Whereas if you don't draw, and you, you know, you think like, oh, well, I tattoo realism, you know, so I, I can just trace stuff. You, you're going to get the jobs that nobody else wants. You know, you're going to get the walk-ins uh, and, and you're not going to get the clients that you, you dream clients that you want to work with because you're not attracting them. You know, you, you've got to put your work out there to attract the people that you want. 
And uh, yeah, if you're constantly relying on the shot to walk-ins, that, that, that's what walk-ins are. They're, they're usually like, it's very rare that someone will be like, walk in the shot. It's like, hey, I want a back piece. You know, it's mostly, it's just like, hey, I want, you know, my girlfriend's name on me, or I want this symbol, or I want, you know, this perfect circle <laughs> that's like, you know, mm-hmm. done with a three-liner. Um, on the ribs. Yeah, on, on my ribs, you know. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the jobs that they're not, they're not the funnest tattoos. If you want to do kind of like the really fun stuff, you really have to develop your style and put yeah. lots of art out there to attract those clients that come specifically to you for your work. And it takes yeah. a bit of time to build that up. So yeah, just be prepared in the beginning to, it's a bit of grind work, you know, sometimes you're going to have to tattoo stuff that you don't want to do. Yep. Yeah, for sure. One thing I'd also like to add that, uh, you know, that's a never ending thing. You know, if you want to keep getting the same clients, you know, I do a ton of tattoos a week, but if you see me post something, it's going to be the style that I want customers to come to me for, you know, cause you know, I could, post all my tattoos but i'm going to keep getting all those tattoos which i already get as walk-ins anyway so Mm. you know i want people to reach out to me that are you know the style that i want to do and you know what i enjoy doing as well um so i think it's important as well the type of style of tattoos that you do will determine your clientele as well so if you do like a lot of biomechanical stuff you're going to get a lot of you know fat old guys coming in to get it whereas if you you know, tattoo, like, you know, um, you know, dainty little lines and stuff like that. You're going to get a lot of female clientele. Mm -hmm. Um, So just be mindful of, you know, what you put out there is going to attract um, a certain type of client and just make sure that's the type of client that you want. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I think we're on, yeah, this is the fourth one. So one thing when I first started was, you know, I got a percentage when I was uh, an apprentice. I think it was 40%. So I got 40, shop got 60. Um, you know, I did that. And that was actually when I started tattooing it as an apprentice, of course. Um, I stuck with that. And then when I went to another shop, they asked me what I got previously. And I wish I would have known then that I should not have said 40%. Um, I was kind of, yes, for sure. Oh. And, you know, I just felt, I just, you know, started learning. And that's when I first moved to um, Nashville as well. So moved locations and they were like, what were you making in the last shop? And I was just like, you know, 40%. And it got to a point to where, you know, I tattooed there for a year. And this is knowing, you know, I knew what I was doing at this point that he kind of stuck me on that for uh, way too long. I finally got up to 50. And then the main reason I left that shop, um, everything was good. I really didn't have too many issues with anything, but other people were getting 60 and just, you know, apprentices were getting 50%, man. So like, you know, I kind of ruined it for myself saying 40, because I never should have accepted anything under 50, you know? Mm -hmm. So just knowing that stuff's a big deal for sure. Um, obviously I don't have to worry about that anymore, but any apprentices going in, you know, just know your worth and that when you are creating good work, um, don't be afraid to bring it up. Cause I, I remember I was like, you know, I don't want to lose this cause you know, I have something going for me here, but at the same time, you know, I was getting destroyed when it came to percentages and stuff. So. And when you, when you take out taxes, equipment costs, rent, bills, food, mm-hmm. you know, raising a family, like, man, that's from 40%, there's not much left. No, man. No. Yeah. I think as well, like, just quickly, man, I love to kind of hear, it's like, man, what are, what are kind of like the stand, I, I think I've done like an email on this before. Um, and I'm kind of curious, what, what are kind of like the typical splits you see like in, in a shop and like what kind of comes with each split? Like, Obviously, you know, the, the less the shop gives you, the more that they should do like marketing mm-hmm. and, and, you know, things like that. Whereas the more they give you, expect to supply your own stuff. But what, what's kind of like been in your experience, like what the typical kind of splits are and what sort of is entailed with each split? So, you know, usually with apprentices and stuff, um, what I've seen other shops, um, you know, it's kind of 50-50. That's when you start tattooing. Obviously, you're not going to make anything until 
you're able to create a good tattoo for the shop you're working at. Um, with that, you know, you're going to be probably 50, 50 until, you know, you are confident and the shop's confident with you being able to do whatever someone asks you to do when they walk in the door. Um, I haven't really been in a shop where they've offered, you know, buying everything. I don't feel like if I was offered that, I kind of use stuff that works for me. So yeah. I'd never want to get into that because, you know, some stuff works for different people. You know, I like the inks I use. I like different brands of cartridges for different stuff that I'm doing. Um, and I really, I've tried everything. So I got to a comfort zone with that. So I really don't want to branch off with that. Um, when you find something that works, you could try new stuff. But don't, you know, just let someone else um, kind of make you change how you're doing everything. So that's the reason I don't really mess with anything like that, just because everyone has different views on what they like to use. Um, so usually, you know, 50 percent, 50, 50, starting out apprenticeship. And then you go up to 60 um, when you're a veteran artist, the highest I've seen um, with a non odor is about 70. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the highest I've really seen. And that was just someone that had something really going for him and they were trying to keep him at a shop and he denied that anyway, because he had way more to gain in the other shop. So. Yeah, man, hundred percent. I think, um, what I was referring to, like, um, I, my experience is kind of similar. Like I started off on 40% as well. Um, I was on that for two years um and then I, I was doing yeah i was doing the same stuff as everyone else in the shop i was doing sleeves i was doing you know big tattoos and that um and yes so what, what i've kind of found is like if if, if you're getting 40 percent, you're either working under a famous tattooer and they've got so much to teach you that, it, that it's worth it or you know you're an apprentice and then it's just like you know you kind of just sort of grit your teeth and bear it but uh i mean if, if you're like a you know, like a fully qualified title, like, you know, you've got some experience under your belt, you've got a portfolio, never accept less than 50%, yeah. you know, um, 50, 50 is kind of the standard. Uh, I'll, I'll, after being on 40%, I was on 50% for like a year. Um, and yeah, 50%. So that the shop that I worked at, they supplied ink caps, they supplied, you know, paper towel, Vaseline razors, like just kind of like the consumables that everyone uses the same stuff with. But when it came yeah. like inks and needles and stuff like that, you had to get your own stuff. Um, and they, they did pretty much no marketing. Um, so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the, the more the shop takes, the more marketing they should do. So even though the shop that I was at didn't do a lot of marketing, when I was on 50%, they had like a, they've been around a long time. So they got a lot of walk-ins. So they're pretty well known around town. But uh, generally if they're taking 50%, you know, you, you want to see them like they've got a website that they're, they're running Google ads, you know, they're, um, they're constantly promoting your work on their Instagram, things like that. Um, and then when it comes to, yeah, like you said, you know, when your artist gets like 60%, then typically it's like, you know, supply all your own stuff, but um, you get like a, an extra bit of cash to, to make up for it, which I think is better because um, the, the money that, you know, you, you, the extra 10% is worth way more than what it costs to get those consumables anyway. So it's just like a better deal in my opinion. Yeah. Especially if you're about, you know, that hustle and getting people in, it's, you're going to make way more in that 10% than, you know, the little stuff. That you buy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Shop owners can use that as like an excuse as well. It's just like, Oh no, you know, we supply all this stuff and I'll try and make it sound like they're giving you a good deal. But I mean, it, it's, yeah, like you said, man, you'll make way more from that 10%. All it's um, doing is saving the hassle of you needing to buy stuff. That's it. And it takes 10 seconds to do it online, you know? So it's not worth it. On top of that as well, when, when you're an apprentice, you have to realize too that, man, you're providing a lot of value to the shop. If you're on the counter working for free, like having, having a counter person in a shop is huge. Um, it, it makes the shop run way less stressfully. You know, everything's more organized. Uh, the shop will get more bookings because obviously if, if you're on the counter all the time and you're not having to get back to a tattoo, you know, you're going gonna, you're gonna to be able to talk to them a lot. You're going to have more time to spend with the, the, the customer and your, your percentage of, of bookings closed is going to be higher. Like you're going you're gonna to be a better, 
I guess you could say salesperson or whatever, because you're not just trying to get back into the tattoo that you're doing out the back. You've got time to talk to them. Um, and it's also, you know, it's, there's nothing worse than when you're in a tattoo shop and you have to get up every five minutes to go and talk to the customer, um, tell them that, you know, no, I can't do that, you know, tiger on your finger because, you know, <laughs> over time the line's thicken and expand and, and you'll lose it. But um, yeah, it's, it's super valuable having an apprentice, someone that cleans, someone that does the bookings. Um, don't, don't think that that's nothing because that's a really big deal and it, and it helps the shop out a lot. Yeah. And if they don't see it as that, then it's really not a shop for you to want to stay at anyway. Yeah. If you're like an apprentice, like, you, and, and no one ever like thanks you for like the work you do, like that's, in my opinion, that's just fucked. Yeah, big red flag there. My next one is you're not going to be young forever. So plan for your future. I know, I know there's, there's a lot of people like in the, in the self-taught tattoo artist unite group, they're kind of a bit older. Um, but, you know, if, if you're in like, you know, you're sort of, you know, your twenties or your thirties, um, just know that, you know, with, with tattooing, you, you don't get like, um, I think what's, I think it's called a 401k in the U S yep. yeah, you don't get a 401k. Army, yeah. You don't get holidays. You don't get sick days. As soon as you stop tattooing, you stop making money. Um, so you've got a plan it's just like, you know, if, if you want to do this for like long term, you've either got to save a ton of money up and, you know, get some investments going or whatever it is so that you've got, you know, some money for your retirement, you've got to, you know, or open up your own shop or, you know, build your brand to a point where you're selling merch, like, you know, t-shirts, prints, whatever like that. So you can kind of get some money coming in when you're not working because how you feel today is not going to be how you feel in 30 years time like you know your back's going to hurt in five or six years oh, i guarantee it you don't feel like it now but i guarantee you after five or six years of spending hunched over tattooing people's ribs is your back's going to hurt dude i feel it now what do you mean <laughs> yeah. i used to work with a guy um his name was justin he'd been tattooing for 10 years and he went to he was having like back pain and getting headaches mm -hmm. and stuff and he went to like the doctors and they got a scan. And the first thing they asked him was like, man, have you been in a car accident recently? It's just, like, yeah. just like, nah, man. It's like, dude, you have like the spine of an 80 year old man. But yeah, it was just so busted up because he's always hunched over and he's really tall. So he like kind of, he's always hunched over. But yeah, just plan for the future, you know, because like um, it won't, it won't, you won't always kind of feel the way that you do now. You won't always have as much energy as you have now. And times aren't always good. You know, if you're making bank right now, you've got heaps of clients, you know, an, another tattoo shop could open in town in 12 months time and that could make it, you know, really difficult for you. So make hay when the sun is shining, um, you know, plan for rainy days and, uh, you know, think about your future and invest in your brand, build, build your social media, build, um, you know, an email list, you know, network with other artists because you never know, someday you might want to start your own shop. And if you have a ton of relationships with other tattooers, it's going to make it really easy to, you know, fill your shop. Whereas if you don't know anyone because you're an introvert, you don't talk to anyone, mm. um, you know, you're just going to be tattooing by yourself and you're not, you're, you're still going to be in that trap of if you're not working, you're not making money. So yeah, that would be my next piece of advice. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a good one, man. Cause you know, stuff comes up in life accidents to where, you know, we use our bodies to do our job mm. and like, if you even break a finger, you're going to be off your game for a while. So, you know, have a kid, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All this stuff is a big deal. So, you know, it's not everyone else is kind of lucky in that retrospect where they have jobs that you could get time off and get paid with your sick. You know, we have to hustle 24 7 if we want to pay bills. So, yeah, for sure. But that's if, if you do it right, though, it can be a way better deal than everyone else working a regular yeah. job. You know, yeah, absolutely. you've kind of got to you've got to work hard but you've also got to work smart as well you know you've mm. got to plan for the future and um yeah building your social media building your email list building your personal brand has a ton of yeah. value mm, for sure next one i would say is uh so tattooing is a full-time job um even more than that you know we pretty much do more than 30 40 hours a week um, cause we tattoo all day, then come home have to draw up designs for the next day. Um, it's really important for your, you know, tattooing career to try to find things besides tattooing that, uh, kind of makes you happy that 
you know, you could grow at and, you know, hobbies, that's a big deal. I know um, you can get really burnt out very quickly in this industry to where really great artists will just quit just because they feel like they have no time to do anything or they'd rather just go back to a desk job just because they have actual time off. You know, they leave and don't have to worry about anything. Um, so, you know, mental health, all that stuff is super important if you're going to be in this industry, because, you know, I've seen great artists, um, like I said, quit or just, you know, develop drinking problems just because, you know, they just don't know what to do with their lives anymore because it's just, just overpowered their whole lives. Um, so I think this is actually a really important one because it's not one that you really think about, but can destroy your life so quickly <laughs> some strong words there <laughs> yeah, no. yeah i totally get what you mean man because there's nothing worse as well like you know if you, when you're kind of like hanging out with people as well if, if all you can talk about is just like oh i'm a tattooer yeah you're pretty you're pretty two dimensional you're like a one-dimensional kind of person you know what i mean and, the, and it's not you, you become kind of not that interesting you know what i mean and yeah. it, it can kind of make it difficult to, um, you know, build and maintain friendships because yeah, all we, all we, all you talk about is tattoos and yeah, you, you, you may love it, but regular people are just like, fuck man, this, this is all this guy talks about. Yeah. You know? it can, one thing I noticed in tattooing is that uh, ethics tend to go out the door when, when people get hungry. Right. So I've worked in a shops where they said, you know, uh, we will never tattoo anyone under the age of 18 never do it and when times were good they were religious about this they were like anyone comes in under 18 no nah, we're not tattooing them yeah, no. um, same if you know if they've got if they haven't got you know tons of tattoos we're not tattooing their hands neck or face mm. but uh and then what happened was well sometimes you know in winter time especially um you know tattooing kind of slows down a bit and then all of a sudden, all those ethics, you know, all those things just like, oh, you know, we're, you know, guardians of the tattooing industry. They just went straight out the door. And, mm-hmm. you know, the shop that I was in, they started tattooing people's hands, necks, faces. They were, they were, you know, they lowered the age down to 16. Uh, and they were tattooing 16-year-olds in, in the shop, you know. So, yeah, I guess it's kind of, a shop owner might say that, you know, they'll, they'll promise you the world. It's like, you know, we, you know, in, in this shop, you know, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna go places and things like that. And they'll make all these promises um, while things are good. But then kind of when things go bad, you know, um, it's just like, well, you know, we can't do that now. You know, yeah. and, and also, um, you know, they, they might promise you, it's like, oh, you know, you're going to be ready to, you know, tattoo soon or we're going to raise your wages or anything like that. But then, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, that was different back then. You know what I mean? And they'll, they'll, they'll always, the shop that, that you kind of work in will always expect you to kind of be loyal um, mm-hmm. to them um, no matter what happens. But as soon as it's not convenient for the shop, you know, or the, or the shop owner, uh, a lot of the time they'll just they'll look out for number one, which is them. Yeah, for sure, um, man. So, you know, it's important to be loyal, definitely. Like, you know, if someone teaches you how to tattoo, like, that's that's awesome, you know, and you should definitely, you know, respect that. But uh, at, at the same time, you know, if, if, if when, it come, when it comes to, you know, you, if you're giving, 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 and you find that as soon as things get bad, it's inconvenient, you know, for the shop and, you know, they, you know, st- stop, you know, supplying tattoo suppliers or, you know, they, they stop kind of, you know, advertising or things like that. Um, or they kind of stop promoting you on their Instagram or whatever it is, you know, and, and they kind of, or, you know, that they push back the date that you'll finish your apprenticeship. Um, yeah. Just, just loyalty is kind of earned. And if it's not reciprocated, mm. um, then kind of don't feel obligated to stay. Yeah, for sure. man. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, because I kind of went through a similar situation like that to where, you know, the whole 40% thing um, and even the 50% thing, he would be like, you know, you could go up to 60 with the rest of the people, uh, you know, just get to this goal. I get to this goal and it would be like, well, you know, the shop's, you know, kind of slow right now and it's never their fault that the shop's slow. You know, it's always the artist in most you're not working hard enough you're not posting enough on instagram yeah, exactly 
It's just like, man, what do you actually do? Like, you just yeah. give us a, like, man, any one of us can get a roof over our head to tattoo in. Like, yeah, man, it, it frustrates me how some shops out there, they just, all they kind of do is take. Yeah. Don't, and don't get me wrong, there are some shops out there that put a ton of effort in the marketing, you know, and they help their artists out a lot. Yeah. But there's also a lot out there that, man, they just take. Yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, why I have my own shop now, because I got tired of that. And a lot of artists are doing the same thing because, you know, it is to the point to where those people, you know, are getting to a point that they're pushing so many people away that they're going to be in a really hard area here soon because all the artists that do step away are just growing and everything. And it's going to put them in a rough situation. So they should have just acted right to begin with. But not only that, but like, this is something that always amazes me. It's like if, if a shop owner always complains about apprentices leaving after they finish their apprenticeship, yeah. if it happens once or twice, give them the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, that apprentice was a bit of a dog. You yeah. know, he, uh, he kind of, you know, stabbed him in the back and just kind of left. But if he said, it's like, yeah, man, the last 10 apprentices that I've had have all left. It's yeah. just, what's more likely those 10 apprentices were all bad people or that maybe this shop owner is a bit of a dickhead. And then 10 people just left because of that, you know? Um, and that's the thing, man, if you treat your apprentices well, um, they'll want to stay, you know? Yeah. And, and if you, you, you invest in them and, you know, you, you know, you treat them well, when, like that's the that, apprentices will remember how you treated them in mm -hmm. four years time when they no longer need you. You know, yeah, and if dude. you treated them like shit in the beginning, then, you know, as soon as like their, you know, their tattoos are dope, they're gone. Like they're kind of bounce. Yeah, dude. And, you know, it's awesome owning a shop, but it is a lot of work. You know, um, not a ton of people out there would like to have the extra stuff that you need to do 24 seven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, there's something really nice about just going to work and then coming home and worrying about your own stuff, not have to worry about bills all that extra stuff. So, you know, if you're doing all those things, an apprentice, when they become an artist, um, it's, a, it's a big deal to explain this stuff to them too. Because everyone, when they first start, you know, I wanted my own shop. And then I started working and everything. I'm like, no, you know, I'm, I'm fine. Just doing what I'm doing right now. But everyone's ambitions when they first start is like, you know, I want to be on my own, all that stuff. But there's a lot that goes into that as well. Um, that takes a very long time to kind of grow and get the knowledge working in a shop, you know, learning the ins and outs and everything before going to do that. Um, but yeah, dude, if you run a shop correctly, you know, a person working there shouldn't just want to leave. There's a couple out there that have their own ambitions and everything, but you know, they'll learn for sure very quickly that there's a lot to go into it besides just tattooing in a building. Yeah, I think it's important to know as well, like once you, um, you know, put on the crown and you're, you know, the guy at the top and you own the shop, you're not just a tattooer anymore. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've got to think about marketing. You've got to think about sales, staffing. Uh, and you, what you'll actually find is when you own a shop, you'll be tattooing less. And if mm -hmm. you don't, and if you still stay in the role of tattooer and all you want to do is just keep 100% of what you make and have a bunch of guys working for you and giving you their money, your business will yeah. suffer. You have to spend time working on your business and not just in it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just just know that it's like once you, if if that's the route that you want to go, you'll probably be tattooing less. And you know, there's a lot of you know once people start owning shops, you know, their their artistic ability actually suffers a bit because they spend so much time on the admin stuff of running the shop that um, you know, that they kind of have to make sacrifices in the art side. So it's just something to think about, you know. Yeah, and just not becoming you know, the person that you left, you know, all the stuff you talked about, you know, getting into that routine is just becoming the exact same thing that you just left the shop for. So, you know, just being mindful and just, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to take a step back and just, you know, evaluate everything and then just go back in to be like, you know, this is how it is. And, you know, it's a big deal for sure. There's a lot to go into it. Sweet. Well, um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much all we've got time for. So, man, if, if anyone's got any questions about anything that we talked about today, just pop them in the comment section below. Um, you know, 
either myself or Brennan be, you know, more than happy to get back to you, answer any questions that you got. And um, yeah, there's anything that you want to see on the next podcast, anything you want us to talk about, you know, tattooing, any questions you got, just let us know. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. Thanks guys for tuning in and uh, I'll see you in the next one.